Hey guys, Professor Yerby here. In this video, I'm going to be going over five fundamental security principles to help you defend against attacks. So this is where it really begins. This is the real the foundation. So let's get started. All right. So defenses against attacks. All right. So our first defense is layering. So information security must be created in layers. One defense mechanism may be relatively easy for an attacker to circumvent. Instead, a security system must have layers, making it unlikely that an attacker has the tools and skills to break through all of the defense layers. So if you look at our graphic here, you can see our outside threat coming here at the top of all of our layers. And way down here in uh, the bottom of the graphic are our information assets. These are the things that we need to keep uh, up and running, keep protected. And between us, we have several different layers so we have perimeter security so this is out on the edge of the network you'll hear people talk about this so it's a perimeter firewall it's something that scans things as they're even trying to come into the, the network you have a IDS and IPS to tell what kinds of intrusions are coming and how to handle them uh, we have message security so do we let emails through with macros in them and viruses and things like that honeypots do we deploy a honeypot out there to try to uh, distract attackers. We have network access where we're filtering and endpoint security where we're looking at what's happening on each individual machine, especially if we're deploying machines out into the field, if we're like giving laptops out. Uh, application security, uh, what are the applications, how do, how do we handle different applications that we allow on our network. Data security, what do we do with the data? Who do we give access to things? What sorts of regulations do we comply with? Things like that. A layered approach can be useful in resisting a variety of attacks. A layered security provides the most comprehensive protection. Okay. The next one is limiting. So limiting access to information re reduces the threat against it. Uh, only those who must use the data should have access to it. In addition, the amount of access granted to someone should be limited to what that person needs to know. Some ways of limiting are technology-based, while others are procedural or policy. So in this graphic, we see some biometric things. So we're looking at a person's gait, a person's handprint. So this is a, a way to authenticate a person. Once a person authenticated, then you need to make sure that they are only getting access to the data resources that they need to have access to. Um, so when you Pull, pull your car in their garage at the end of the night, uh, you're limiting the access that attackers have uh, to break into your car, right? Okay, the next one is diversity. So diversity, layers must be different or diverse. So that if attackers penetrate one layer, they cannot use the same techniques to break through all the other layers. Using diverse layers of defense means that breaching one security layer does not compromise the entire system. So in this diagram, we have a supplier's vendor, and then we have our internal enterprise. For someone to get through, this one, this is an example of how they were able to get through. Uh, they were able to defeat one vendor, go to the internal enterprise, and then get to the other vendor. So what a better diagram would have been is if they had to go through a to get to B, to get to C, to get to the internal enterprise. Here, each of these layers were on the same level, so there really was no diversity in here. So what we could do is say we could have a Cisco product here and a Juniper product here, and then some Microsoft stuff here. And that way, when there's a problem with our Microsoft stuff, it, it doesn't leave us completely exposed. We have layers and we have diversity. When Cisco has some huge hack and all Cisco products are rendered useless for two days we're not completely open to the world. Uh, the next principle is uh, one that people like to really debate um, it's sub security through obscurity so obscurity is not revealing the type of computer the operating system and software the network connection that a computer uses an attacker who knows this information can more easily determine the weakness of the system. Obscuring information can be an important way to protect information. 
So again, all you're doing is you're not broadcasting. You're not uh, replying back to those pings to allow an attacker to map out your network. Because if an attacker knows what's on your network, then that gives them a starting point of where where to plan their attack. So we see this stranger here on the screen, and uh, his name is Guy Incognito. So there's no way we could tell who this really is because he's obscured his look, right? So one of the common things that people will do through obscurity is hiding their SSID, their name of their wireless network. And so does that give you any more security? Maybe, a tiny bit. And so the people who always say that there's there's no security through obscurity, that a great reply to those people is, okay, well, give me your bank account number. And then they'll say, well, well I don't want to give you that. Well, it's, you know, subsecurity so through obscurity. All right, and then our fifth and final principle is simplicity. So information security by its very nature is complex. Uh, complex security systems can be hard to understand, troubleshoot, and feel secure about. As much as possible, a secure system should be simple for those on the inside to understand and use. Complex security schemes are often compromised to make them easier for trusted users to work with. Keeping a system simple from the inside but complex on the outside can sometimes be difficult but reaps a major benefit at securing something. All right, so here's an example of a uh, security diagram and you see that these different things connect here and the dotted lines mean something and we have uh, different DMZs here. We have even within the DMZ there's multiple zones and there's dashed lines and there's cut throughs here and there's multiple firewalls. So when someone calls you over somewhere in zone A on the intranet but they need access to something in the branch office you have to figure out how do you make all this work give them the permissions that they should have and not just punch a hole through all of these different uh, security measures that you put into place so again uh, re recap the five types of defenses against attacks were layering, creating multiple layers, limiting, limiting what someone's able to get access to, diversity, having diverse set of vendors and products and, and policies, obscurity, hiding, and simplicity, making it understandable from the people working on the inside. Thanks for your time on this video and have a great day.